Talk Successful Indie Author, 5-Minute Focus, Episode 132, Blurb, Another Round. This will be a few few times I've talked about this, and this follows after Episode 131, where I talked about that stunning one-liner, that top line, bold, italic, it stands out uh, on on uh, Amazon's product page or any of the other product pages, uh, whether you use Kobo or Barnes & Noble or Apple. Make it bold, make it italics, uh, make it H3, H4 header size, and make it stand out. That's your that's your uh, flashing neon light. What you put after that for the rest of your blurb, this is where what are the characters, what are the situations, what are the what is the conflict? Don't go into the resolution of uh, of your story, but what are the conflicts that are going to be within your story? This is what you highlight, and you highlight it. By just touching on it. <clears throat> yeah. So what could happen? Not how. Uh, plot activators. What is the catalyst for something that energizes your characters who then move the plot forward? This is, Just touch on those. Uh, Amazon gives you 4,000 characters. Don't use them all. Uh, it's uh, very few people will read the whole thing. However, in nonfiction, I've found that more is better. I have a, I have really long sections on nonfiction. Here's everything I need I know about this. Here's the high points. Maybe share the uh, uh, table of contents kind of uh, information. That stuff is important. And we found out from Robin Cutler yesterday on uh, uh, on the CNM show that in Ingram Spark, if you're selling nonfiction, you want that subtitle to carry everything. You want all the metadata you can jam in there. So people looking for an expert in this in this. Uh, whatever your topic is, that they can find you. I'm a big fan of above the fold. I like people being able to make that decision to buy the book above the fold. Uh, almost all sites have a cut down, like 140 characters. Uh, in Amazon, it's three lines, maybe four lines, if you only use uh, small fonts. And uh, that's where that's where your heavy impact is. I use probably six, five or six sentences is all, and a lot of them are just fragments of a sentence, just saying, hey, here's something that, uh, let, me, let me bring up some stuff so you can see. Yeah, yeah, I was really well prepared for this morning's episode. How about that, huh? Uh, let's go there, let's go there. <clears throat> Let's look at this one uh, in this series. This is book twelve, but I still take it seriously that hey, I want to I want to draw the readers in. I don't just want to assume they're going to buy it because it's book twelve and they're on board with the series. Lies and deceit leading to a domino of crimes. Just a statement. It doesn't. Uh, it kind of sets the stage. Space lawyer. Uh, there's the stuff they're going to look at. The Trans Pacific Task Force is getting ready to deploy, but they don't have what they need. Someone's been skimming. A contract won through mistruce. Incomplete payments limit the army's readiness. Colonel Marcy Walton is angry and calling anyone who will answer. That's the stuff you see above the fold. <clears throat> so I've got the characters. I put character names because this is book 12, and I want them to say, oh, hey, these characters that we love who are in a different series, well, they're going to be back in this one because I wanted to set that hook and leverage that old series to bring readers into this in, into this book. Let's see what else. Uh, and just and just high points. Just hey, here's things that that could happen. Here's the characters that you should be interested in. That's what I think you should be interested in. Here's another one. Centauri Prime was an epic failure, especially for a battle they supposedly won. Melbourne, the human colonized planet of the inner system, wanted a combat unit that could win and win quickly. Terror Command was born. Terrorcom, and they needed a place to train. A frontier world, one sheriff, and all the action one spaceport can't hold. That's that's almost it. That's the entirety of the uh, of the blurb on that uh, on that one volume, because it had the high points. It had some speculation, a lot of ambiguity. Terrorcom, oh my God, we should be afraid of them because Terror Command. Yes, cool, right? Uh, it's a space western. Come on, give me, give, throw me a bone. The uh, <clears throat> but this is this is what we're looking for. Just the interest, the ambiguity, and align with you, with your readers. And uh, I was trying to pull in this volume, this was uh, book six out of a 12-book series, I was trying to pull in some military sci-fi readers into 
the the western kind of uh, the space western. So you can see how you can use that to attract readers, to bring people to your brand, to bring people into your book, and then end with that call to action. What's my what's my uh, call to action on that one? Oop, come on in here. Join us on the latest journey through Dark Landing. Some kind of call to action. Pick it up today. Uh, remind the reader that this isn't just, uh, you're not just promoting something, but you actually want them to buy it. So pick it up today. Read it. Find out who did this awful thing right now. Click buy, whatever it might be. All right. That's it. Ooh, almost six minutes. Blurbs. Blurbs are so multifaceted. You want ambiguity. You want to set the hook right away with that super cool, stunning one-liner. You want to, uh, characters and plot just enough to show the readers that, oh, hey, there's a few characters that so are going to do some interesting things. What? Don't tell them how. Never tell them how it turns out. Never tell them how it turns out. All right, people. Have a good day.